black man. He's been around us so long, he don't know he's black anymore, but <laughs> hallelujah. He said something about being black, and I said, I forgot you were black, Sam. And I told him, I said, you're fixing to hear it black and white when me and Sam get through with it. And Brother Barnes, I spoke. remember Brother Barnes from Texaco, Big Brother Barnes? Used to be a black panther. He come running up the aisle at me while I was preaching. I said, you better stay back, Barnes, unless you got your eyes closed worshiping because you're not running at me, buddy. And a few years ago, he was dancing with a little white guy. He's not here this year. I know him, but he and Brother Barnes used to be in the Black Panthers, and to be in that chapter, you had to kill a white man to be in that chapter. I told him, I said, if I'd have met you in the world, I'd have whipped you, Brother Barnes. <laughs> Jumping up at me with that afro. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and Brother Barnes was dancing with this little white guy, and I went over and got Brother Urshan. I said, Bishop Carroll, I want you to see something. See that big black guy? And he said, yeah, I said, he used to be in the Black Panthers. I said, see the little white guy? And he said, yes. And I said, he used to be the dr grand dragon of the KKK in Alabama. I was preaching for Rex Johnson a few months ago, and he's got a kicking country and western band. I never could get drunk enough to like country and western music. But, but, but Brother Rex has got an awesome country and western band, and they was up singing, and there must have been 50 black people out there dancing and boogieing to country music. I said, that's got to be a move of God to get uh, <laughs> African Americans out there boogieing to kiss an angel good morning and... See, we need to spend everything on him. God's trying to crush us. It took Moriah for Abraham. It took Jacob. How do you say it in, in uh, English? Yaakov. Uh, Jacob. Hallelujah. It took Jabbok for Jacob. It took the pit for Joseph. It took the, you know what made David? It wasn't his ability to sing and dance. It was the cave. And the wilderness that made David. Come on. Come on. And you know why David was a man after God's own heart? It wasn't because he'd get up there and shuck and jive and do a two-step. Gad, the prophet, came to David. Here's what the Jews teach. Gad came to David and there was a plague. 70,000 were dead. And Gad said, you build it, better build an altar. That altar had to be five foot high, five foot wide. And David said, if God asked me for an altar, I'm going to build him a temple. That's why God loved David. The Jews teach every time God would look towards the Holy Land, David would be down there waving his hands and blowing kisses at him and up on rocks saying, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, God. Hallelujah. You know what made Peter great? It was Gethsemane. Come on. Can you imagine? Peter's doing what he thought he could do. And they came and they arrest Jesus. He reaches over. And grabs that sword, whop, cuts his ear off. Somebody said, I don't believe he would have got his head if he had it. No, he was aiming for his ear because this was the man that stood behind the great high priest. And if he was defamed and his ear was cut anymore, he couldn't be before the priest anymore. Peter said, I'm going to put you out of commission religiously, buddy. And Jesus reached down, picked it up. Said Peter, that's the sword you live by all your life. That's the wrong sword. We can't have the kingdom with this. Hallelujah. Come here, Malchus. And he put that ear back on. And you know what? Matthew never mentions the name of the man that cut the high priest's servant. Mark never mentions it. Luke never mentions it. Only John. You know why? Because when Matthew wrote his gospel and Mark wrote his gospel and Luke wrote theirs, Peter was still alive. And there was such a love among those apostolic brethren that they wouldn't tear a wound open and embarrass him before the people. But when John wrote his, Peter was dead and John was on the aisle of Patmos. And he said, let's let it, you know that the man that had the sword cussed and said, I don't know Jesus was Cephas the reed. He was the one God used to open the door of Pentecost because he became reduced and said, God, make me. I just got to have you, God. Come on. Ruth would have never left Moab if a death hadn't separated her. 
Come on. See, the ox pulling the cart stumbled at Nacon's threshing floor. A threshing floor is a smooth place. It's not normal for an ox to stumble in a threshing floor. I've been to many threshing floors. Calvary's a threshing floor in Israel. Mount Moriah's a threshing floor. We've been there, brother. It, they're a threshing floor. And it's not, but that ox stumbled in a smooth place. But the threshing floor is a place of separation. You know what made Joseph great? said he's got a different spirit than his brethren. His brethren cursed, but Joseph said, I'm not going to be a cursor. I'm going to be a blesser. Come on. When the 11th hour people get reduced to zero, then God's going to do something for us like we've never seen and before in our life. You want to win cities and you can't even control your spirit. Come on. Moses fasted 40 days and blew it. He did. Speak to the rock. Whap! God said, carry your sweet self up there to the top of Nebo. Come on. Well, I just say what I think. Good God, that's no virtue. It's a shame for a person to have a good ministry and run it because they can't keep their mouth shut. Come on, somebody said, God never loses a battle. There's a, there's a bunch of them he doesn't show up for. He said, if you'll hold your peace, I'll fight your battles. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. If you're going to always complain with chronic headaches, don't keep banging your head against the wall. We don't need our doctrine straightened out. Come on. We're as orthodox as any Pharisee that lives in Jerusalem today. We walk by the people that's afflicted and thrown in the ditch, and if they don't look just like we think they ought to look and fit into our little club, we pass by them. Come on, we pass right on by them. Right on by. They don't fit my. One day and a guy said, and, and it was Super Bowl time. And I went up to get me a Coke and a hot dog. And, and uh, right here in St. Louis, Concourse C. And it was Super Bowl time, and I got my Bible out, and I was reading my Bible, and I was reading this song, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the living God, and there standeth in the west. I like to read it out loud, because faith cometh by hearing. When I speak it to myself, it gets in my spirit, it gets in my heart, and uh, it builds faith. That's H-E-A-R-I-N-G. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I walked over, and the guy said, Who are you for in the Super Bowl? And I said, I don't care if they beat each other to death. I don't have any idea who's even playing, the bucks or the goats. I said, I'm not really interested because I can tell you what the score will be before the game ever starts. The guy said, you can't. And I said, I'll bet you I can. He said, he said, I'll bet you $100. I said, you better be glad I don't bet because I'd take your money. He said, you mean you can tell me what the score will be before the game starts? I said, yes. He said, how? I said, zero to zero before the game starts. about that time a mama come walking by. You couldn't tell if she was in the dress trying to get out of it, out of it, trying to get in it. I've seen more cotton in the top of an aspirin bottle than she had in that dress. One of them religious blouses on, lo and behold, hallelujah. And she walked by and, 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 and every man in that airport noticed her. Say, did you notice her? I'm saved, not dead. Any time, any time you're in such a bad shape, you can't look at a pretty lady and say she's pretty without lusting, buddy. You need to get to an altar. Come on, we need to get our spirits under control. So I was sitting there reading my Bible, and, and I was saying, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of the God. I looked out the corner of my eye, and she'd come up and sit down right beside me. And I switched. I said, Leave me not into temptation. Deliver me from evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 